Hey there, I'm Greeny, this is Greenbox, and this is a video tour of the YOLO Live in-stream all-in-one encoder and live streaming solution. If you're looking for a review of the device, check out the video in the info card up there as we did a full review of the device earlier. In this video tour, we will go together through this device and I will show you all the settings and things you have to set up in order to go live. All right, let's start with the physical device itself and its ports. On one side, we find two HDMI ports, one USB-A port, a one quarter inch screw hole for mounting, one gigabit ethernet port, one HDMI out port, as well as a USB-C port for charging the device. On the other side of the device, we find one headphone check, one microphone, as well as line in check, another one quarter inch screw hole, a full sized SD card reader, as well as the SIM card slot. And finally, the power button. When first setting up the in-stream from Yolo Life, you will be greeted with the account and settings page. On this screen, you will be able to log into your Yolo Life account or create one in case you don't have one. The network settings in which you can connect the device to your Wi-Fi, SIM network, or in my case, Ethernet cable. And in here, you will also have an internet test which will tell you if the device is connected to the internet and if so, how fast your internet is. In my case, we have a full gigabit of speed. That's, that's plenty enough for live streaming. Uh, we have the About the Device page where you find all the information. We have the Version page where you can click to do an update in case there is an update available. There is the Language setting in which you can change the language. Currently, there are only three languages supported. There is the Time Zone setting in which you can set the time zone for your location. There is the recordings management, which you can use to delete recordings you did earlier with the device. There are additional system firmware updates in case anything needs updating, it will be listed here. There is the help center, which connects to the internet and shows you some uh, starting guides for the in-stream. And there is the factory reset setting that you can use to factory reset the entire device, as well as the option to log out from your YOLO Life account. Once you have logged into your YOLO Life account, you can close the account and settings page and you will be greeted by the overall dashboard. Before we dive into all the parts of this dashboard, let me give you a rough orientation of where to find what. At the very top left corner, we find the account and settings page that we just came from. On the right side, we have an indicator that tells us how long we are already recording. In the upper left corner, we find the app drawer, which allows us to start apps. Below that, we will find the source section, which will list all the sources that we have connected to the device. On the very right bar, we find our settings menu, uh, which we can use to switch between overlays, audio, video, and settings. And just left to that is the section of all the settings that are corresponding to the settings in the settings bar. If we swipe down from the device, we get the brightness settings in which you can, well, set the brightness of the device. We will go through all those parts in a little bit more depth in just a sec, but I would say, let's start building our first live stream. To do that, we are connecting two cameras which are currently outside the frame here, and to do that, I'm just using some HDMI cables which are going to those cameras. And once I plugged in those HDMI cam cables, the camera should show up in our source window. Uh, to do this, you can use pretty much any modern camera. The only two requirements your camera needs to match is the first, the camera needs an HDMI port, of course, otherwise we cannot connect to an HDMI cable. And the second is your camera needs to be able to send a clean image over HDMI. So that means an image without the on-screen settings. Most cameras can do that these days, but there are some cheaper uh, starter cameras that do not have those settings. I am using two uh, Sony photo cameras and they work just fine. So we have now two HDMI sources on our screen and we see that HDMI source two is for some reason flipped on its head. And to fix that, we can go into the settings of that source. So we click on the settings page, and now we can say either rotate, flip, or chroma key. We will talk about chroma key in just a moment, but for now, we want to rotate the image 180 degrees. So I'm pressing rotate 90. I do this again, rotate 90, and hey, I am now the right way around. Okay, so that worked just fine. So let's now add a third camera, and this time we're using a USB webcam. So I'm just plugging in a USB camera to the in-stream. 
In this case, I'm using the YOLOLIVE VertiCam, which is a special made USB webcam for vertical video creation. This is a vertical motorized PTC camera, which means it can pan, it can tilt, and it can zoom. And that's not even the coolest thing. The coolest thing is, thanks to the remote, I can program some presets and then fastly recall them, which is pretty useful if you want to use just one camera but frame multiple different people when they're talking with each other, for example, when you're doing a live stream for a live event. Anyway, if you want to learn more about the YOLOLIVE VertiCam, check out my review I did on it, either in the video description down below or up there in the info card. All right, so let's move back to the in-stream with now three cameras connected. And with three cameras connected, we can now create picture-in-picture -picture modes. So let's set up a picture-in-picture -picture mode. To do that, we click onto the Add Video Source, then select Picture-in-Picture -picture Video, and now we can select which sources we want to use for our picture-in-picture -picture mode. In my case, I want to do a simple picture-in-picture -picture with my face from the USB camera, as well as my top-down view from my table. So I select the USB camera first, and then I select my top-down view second, and press Done. But as you can see, this is kind of a weird framing. It would be much more useful if we can rotate our top-down view, and that's exactly what we do. So we press Done, and then we go back to the setting of our top-down camera, which in my case is HDMI camera 1. We again press the settings, then say rotate 90 degrees. Do it two more times. And now it's the right orientation. And we go back to our picture-in-picture -picture mode by doing a long press on it, and then say edit. And in, this, in here we can now select uh, our picture in picture, move it around, and this looks way better. Now I can fix the framing by actually using the camera, and we have a picture in picture mode that allows me to showcase a product in uh, a live stream. So let's say we are happy with that, say done, and now we have fixed our picture in picture mode, and we are ready with a total of four video sources to start our first live stream. We will talk about audio and overlays in just a sec, but I want to take a moment to show you how to start an app and how to get video from your in-stream into the app. So for my example, we're using Instagram. So I'm just starting the Instagram app. And the cool thing here is this device is basically a big Android phone. So we can run the official apps if we're using Instagram, TikTok, or any of the other apps. And since we're using the official apps, we are not having a problem with the terms of service and can use the device to stream our real cameras to Instagram. So we have Instagram in the upper left corner now. And to be honest, it's a little small. So we want to full screen our Instagram app. And to do that, we simply swipe up and press full screen and we are now in full screen mode. I want to create a new live stream, so I press the plus button, then swipe over to live, and here we are. And we already see our camera in the Instagram app. We are currently only seeing the HDMI camera one, and this is because we haven't switched over to one of the other cameras. To do this, we have two possible ways. One way is to again minimize Instagram by swiping up and minimizing, then changing the source. Or if we don't want to minimize Instagram and we want to stay in this view, we can use the side menus and to open the side menus, we press on the corner of the device, which will bring in our source selection. And if we now want to switch to a different camera, for example, the picture in picture mode, we simply click on it and Instagram is receiving the picture-in-picture -picture mode. And now I technically could just hit the live button and we go live, but we want to add some overlays and additional graphics first before we go live, and I will show you how to do that. Uh, first, we go again into the minimized mode so we have a better look uh, onto the overlays. Uh, first, let's, uh, let's select a different camera, and now we want to add some overlays to our production. Overlays can be photos, can be lower thirds with text or even countdowns. And to do that, we first need to go to our overlay page on the right side and then press this big red plus button 
And uh, now we can say what kind of overlay do we want to add. Let's start with an image overlay. So I press image overlay and this will bring up all the overlays I have saved to the SD card on the in-stream device. So let's say we are celebrating something. So let's select overlay number three, which is some confetti, press done. And now we have the ability to scale it. In my case, I want to use it as full screen, press done. And we now have an overlay loaded to the right side. As you see right now, not much has changed in the Instagram view. But if I now press onto this overlay, Instagram is now receiving my image with the overlay overlaid on top of the HDMI camera number two. And to remove the overlay, we simply press again onto the overlay on the right side and the overlay is gone. You can add as many overlays as you want. And uh, in fact, we're going ahead and we are adding a second kind of overlay, which would be the lower third. In here, the in-stream gives us some templates that we can choose from. And I say, let's take this one. This one looks fine. And if we select the one that looks fine, we get some settings that we can dial in and customize our overlay. First of all, I want the overlay not to be at the top, but at the bottom. So I can simply move it around with my finger and then use the right side to customize it. So let's say this is a title, which would be And now we can go ahead and uh, customize the font. So let's say we want our title to be, let's see, this font and our subline to be, let's see, that font. We can also change the background color. So let's say we want it to be green because green box, you know, and uh, we don't want it to be like that crazy. So we want to have a little bit of transparency. So we go in and say, okay, just a little bit. And then maybe we want to scale the entire thing a bit like that. And uh, we're good to go. So let's press the done button. And we now have a second overlay added to our overlay selection. And the same thing as before, if I press that button, I will have the overlay below me. And just with the sources, we can also bring in the overlays while we are in the full screen. And to do that, we just press onto this little uh, flap here on the right side in the full screen. And we can now overlay multiple overlays on top of each other. All right, moving on with overlays, there is a third kind of overlay I want to add, and this is a countdown timer. So let's press the countdown timer one. And again, we have uh, templates that we can choose from. So let's go with the first one. And uh, again, on the right side, we can customize it, color, font, everything. And of course, we can also set the time. So let's say this is uh, zero minutes and let's say, let's say 10 seconds, five seconds. Okay, done. And uh, we also want the background color to not be transparent. We want this be to full black. So let's set it to black and transparency to 100% or transparency 0%. Hit done. And once we're using our countdown timer, so let's hit it, uh, it will be on the stream. And after the countdown timer has ended, it will automatically be removed and uh, the live stream will be back on. This can be very useful if you want to have like a two minute countdown timer at the beginning of your stream to give all your followers time to like get into the stream and be ready for you to go live. So much about overlays. Let's talk about pre-recorded videos. Of course, we cannot just add live cameras, but we can also add pre-recorded videos. To do this, we simply go again to our source overview, press on add video source, and this time we are selecting local video one or local video two. So let's start with local video one. In here, uh, we can choose between our SD card or portable storage in case you have like connected the USB stick to uh, the in-stream. In my case, we have a USB webcam, so we need to use the SD card. And uh, let's, let's take, uh, let's take a, a snippet from a live stream I did earlier with the in-stream. Select that, press done, and we have now a new source, which is that video. And uh, we can also, again, press add video source, and let's add a second local video. And this time, let's use a video that has a green screen in it. So let's use this video of this little dog in front of a green screen, right? 
So let's add this. Earlier, I mentioned chroma keying, and with this example of a green screen, I want to show you how you can remove green screens or blue screens from your footage or your live camera in case you want to have no background. Go to the video source that has a green screen in it, press the settings icon, and then select chroma keying. In this overview, we have to enable the chroma key setting, so we enable it and the green screen is already gone. If this video would have had a blue screen instead of a green screen, we could change this in the key color type setting. So we can change this from green to blue. But in our case, of course, green was the correct choice. So we select green, go back. Additionally, we can replace the background with a background image and we can do this by simply pressing onto the background image option and then selecting again from our SD card an image that we want to use as a background. In my case, I am using this living room background, press done, and now our little dog is sitting on the table in front of a wonderful living room. So let's hit done, and our little dog is now available as a video source that is currently going directly to Instagram. This pretty much sets up the optical sides of a live stream, so let's move over to audio and to do this, we simply change from overlays to audio on the right side panel. And now we have the audio setup overview. I know this can look a little bit scary, a lot of sliders, and you might not 100% be sure what they do. Don't worry, we go through them and you will know what you have to do. And honestly, thanks to the work of the YOLO Life team, this is a pretty simple setup. So they did a very good job on this. All right, so let's start with what we see. We see every audio source that is going into the device. And every audio source has its own volume slider. So if we go through this, we have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and down here is our USB camera. So we have three entries for our cameras in which we can either boost the volume of the camera or lower the volume of the camera individually. If you want to know how loud a source is, you will need to use headphones, which you plug in into your headphone jack. Then you will hear the audio which is currently going through the device, and then you can use those sliders to dial in the right volume. Next to the volume slider, there is a off and on button, and with those buttons, we can select which audio source is currently audible. So let's start at the very top. At the top, there is program. And program basically means everything that is going out to the live stream, out to your Instagram app. So if we say program is set off, this is the same thing as muting the live stream. So let's turn back on our program volume. And if you want to make everything quieter or everything louder, the only slider you ever want to touch is the program slider at the very top. If you have a static setup with just one microphone that is on at all time, for example with me, the microphone on my chest, you would go to that microphone that you want to enable, that could be a microphone that is connected to a camera, or uh, a microphone that is directly connected to your in-stream device. I have connected a microphone directly to the in-stream, which is the mic in. And we can enable that microphone by pressing onto the off button and then setting its volume. Note that your mic in as well as line in also have a delay value. This can be used to adjust the delay in case the audio from your microphone is coming in later or earlier than the image of your HDMI device. Right now, the only microphone that would ever be audible on the stream is the microphone that I connected directly to the in-stream. However, there is also an option in this audio mixer, which is audio follows video, which is this button over here, the AFV button. And if we press that, what the in-stream does is it always picks the audio source corresponding to the video that is currently on stream. So let's say we want to jump to our HDMI camera number two. Note that HDMI camera two currently here is turned off. If I switch to HDMI camera 2, the in-stream has automatically connected and turned on the microphone from the HDMI camera number 2. If I now switch over to HDMI camera 1, HDMI camera 2 got disabled and HDMI camera 1 got enabled. If you don't want to have that, just 
deselect the audio follows video and you can again go ahead and manually select what you hear. By the way, this also applies to pre-recorded videos. So let's re-enable the audio follows video and if you want to play a pre-recorded video, uh, let's go down here to the local video slot number one and if I press the video, note how the local video one just got enabled. So just keep in mind, if you're not using the audio follows video option and you want to play a pre-recorded video, you have to make sure that uh, that video is selected to sending audio. I hope the audio mixer isn't that scary anymore and honestly, most of the time when I'm using the device, the only thing I'm doing is I am setting the audio follows video to on and use the most upper slider to control the overall volume. The other sliders I usually don't even touch. Then let's move on to the next setting on our side panel, which would be recording. In here we can set up everything we need for recording our live streams. That's right, yeah, you can not only live stream directly to Instagram, TikTok or other apps that are installed on the in-stream, no, you can also create a local recording of your live stream. Or in fact, you don't even have to live stream, you can only use the in-stream to record if this is something you want to do. In order to start the recording, we simply go to the recording setting page here and we then simply hit start recording. If I do that right now, I get prompted that I have a SD card that only allows a video file to be up to four gigabytes. That's why it's uh, cutting the video into smaller clips. Uh, that, that's not something you really need to worry about. It's just that you probably have multiple files rather than just one big file of uh, recordings. And we, we will talk about this in a second. Uh, I think you should actually have it this way rather than just one long file. Okay, so let's say start recording and right now I am recording what's currently going out to Instagram. And uh, why do I know that I am recording? This is because up here in our recording indicator, first of all we have a flashing red light that tells me we are recording and second of all I see that we are recording for almost 20 seconds already. So imagine I do now my recording over here, I jump the cameras, I, I talk to the people, I do what I have to do on my live stream and then I'm done with the recording and to stop the recording we again go to our side panel to recording and then click on start recording one more time and we stop the recording. And now the recording can be found on the SD card and in fact we could use this recording that we just did now as a video source, as a pre-recorded video and stream it live anytime we want. But let's also look at the other two settings that we have over here on the side which is recording limits. With those settings here, we can say that our in-stream is splitting the video every 10, 20, 30 or 60 minutes. I think having it set to 10 minutes is a good idea because if you're out with the device and for some reason you, you go out of power or you drop the device or something happens that interrupts the recording, your recording will be corrupted. So that's why I recommend that people use this setting and set it to 10 minutes rather than continuously which gives you one handy file but if something happens and you go out of power the entire file is corrupted and you might not be able to use it at all. So I prefer it to split every 10 minutes. I hope that makes sense. And the last setting over here is our storage setting in which we can say where we want to save the, the recording that we are creating. And uh, since I'm using a USB webcam right now, I, I can't connect the USB storage. So the only option I have is to use the SD card which I inserted into the in-stream device. And with that done, let's go to the last page on the side panel which would be settings. First of all, we have the video switching controls. And in here we can say how we switch between one and another video source. Right now it's set to just clicking a video source with one single click. This is easy but it could end in accidental camera switches and if you don't want to do that, you can set it to double clicking. So if I click a source once now, nothing happens. But if I double click a source, it is switching the video. So this is something that comes up to personal preferences. In my case, I'm okay with a single switch as I use it in a studio setup where I'm not having my hands on the device at all times. Then second, there is local video switching that tells us how we should handle a pre-recorded video file when we're switching. The first setting is that we continue playing when switching. It's, this means the video file will just uh, continue playing in the background without it being on stream. 
And the second setting is resume first frame and pause when switching. This means that when we go onto a pre-recorded video, it starts from the beginning, but if we switch away from the video, it continues running until it's not on screen anymore. And the last one, the one I prefer, is uh, the video is paused when we switch. Then next up, there is the SD card management. This is basically the same window we saw at the beginning of the video, where we can select certain uh, videos that we recorded and delete them from the SD card. And there is also the portable storage manager, which is the same thing as the SD card manager, just for USB storage devices, which again, I am not using as I'm having connected the YOLO Live Verticam as a USB webcam. Then next up there is the video out setting and this might be very handy depending on how you're producing your videos. With this setting we tell InStream how we want to send out videos on other outputs than our apps. So as you might see over here we see the entire device and the way I do this I use the HDMI out port to mirror its screen and send it to a capture card so you can see it. But I can also say that I don't want to mirror the screen of the device, I just want to send out the same image that uh, Instagram would get or any other app. And if I want to do that, I would enable program out. Now you just see that selected video source. So over here you now see basically the same thing that Instagram would see when I'm using the Instagram app. But since this is a tutorial video, a tour guide, uh, we need to see what I'm pressing. So I'm going to disable this once more and we again see the entire screen. We can also connect the YOLO Live in stream to a computer and use it as a webcam, so to say, and do the same thing I just did with HDMI via USB. And to enable or disable that, there is the USB out setting. If you do that, the in stream will be visible on your computer as a webcam device, and you get the program out view that we just saw here as an example over your USB. And lastly, we can flip the entire image horizontally if this is something we want to do. Then going out of the setting again and going to the video source transitions. So right now, when I'm switching between two video sources, it's just a simple cut. However, we can change this behavior with one of those presets. For example, we can set it to a wipe. And if I uh, again change the source, it's now wiping over the screen. We can even select how fast this transition is going to be with this slider at the very top. So let's make it a three second transition and let's see how the cross zoom would look like. And uh, let's uh, switch again to our little dog. And this is how that would look like. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, you can basically work your way through all of those settings once and uh, find the one that works best for you. And once you find one that, that you like, you just keep that and uh, go live. I am more of a old school <laughs> guy. I just like hard cuts. I just, I think this is, is the best. Just a hard cut, no fades, no transitions, no fancy 3D cubes like this one. <laughs> just, just a simple cut, that, that, that's, my, that's my thing. All right, let's go back and go to the encode settings. In here we can set up the encoder for our recorded videos and live streams. Honestly, if those settings are not talking to you and you're not really understanding it, usually it's a good idea to just go with CBR, which is constant bitrate encoding. In this case, it's even the default and it tells you and go with a bitrate between 3000 and 4000 in the bitrate window. If you have a very bad internet connection for your device, you might also go lower than 3000, but be aware that below 3000, you might get some uh, visual artifacts when recording and live streaming. I personally go for either 3000 or uh, 4000. Sometimes, like right now, where I'm sitting in a studio with an ethernet cable connected to the device, I even go to 6000 kilobits as bitrate, but uh, Again, if you don't know what those settings exactly do, simply go for CBR 3000 and that should be fine. Uh, also down there, you can set up your uh, frame rate. In my case, I go with 30, which is currently the highest. Um, there might be an update coming to the device that I was higher frame rate, but at the moment, uh, 30 frames per second is the highest frame rate available. And uh, there is one last setting which is noise reduction, and that is noise reduction that is regarding your audio inputs. So if you're, for example, sitting in a room where somewhere is a computer running with its fans, you probably want to enable uh, the noise reduction, which is reducing that background noise. 
for you thanks for watching if you want to learn more about one of those devices check out the reviews i did on both of them both are linked in the info card or in the video description down below i am greeny this is greenbox and this was the tour of the instream from yolo life and i'll see you in another video bye bye